Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna look at the last missing piece that we need for this build. These RockShox Reba Dual Air Forks that are from 2005. 15 years old. Wow. We're gonna take them apart, clean them up, change the seals and hopefully by the end of it they are gonna be ready for some fun. Let's begin. For this project we're gonna need quite a lot of tools so I'm gonna tell you about them when we need them. First of all we're gonna have to remove the, the air caps and remove whatever air there is in the positive chamber and then in the negative chamber. So to do this just simply unscrew both caps. Take a 4mm Allen key. I'm gonna start with the positive chamber, which is the upper one. Next thing, remove the rebound adjuster knob like this. Just push it out. And here we have a Allen bolt. I think a five millimeter Allen key will be required for this. Okay, so it's unscrewed, but I'm gonna screw it in just a few threads and then I'm gonna, I'll am going i be able to use my rubber mallet and just hammer a bit so I can release the lowers from the uppers. On the other side, it's actually a 10 millimeter bolt. So here we have a 10 millimeter spanner. Again, I'm gonna unscrew it just a little bit past the threads. So when I'm hammering it, I don't, I don't hit the threads and I hit the bolt instead. Okay. Let's see if this will work out. Yeah, that is it. Now we can unscrew everything all the way. There might be a bit of oil in the wallers, so I'm just gonna place a paper rack while I'm removing them. Oh, wow. Actually, the oil looks quite good. I'm just gonna empty it in a container and then we can recycle it properly. Okay, the rebound side is still not released, so I have to hammer it a bit more. I'll try using a 5mm Allen just for a bit more leverage. Yep. So that was all that was needed then. Let's see now how much oil is on the rebound side. Oh, okay, the oil from the rebound side definitely looks a bit worse, but nothing too bad. Now let's wipe the overs as well, so they are not dirty. We're gonna clean them in the end and also remove the dust seals. So you can see the dust seals are in quite a rough shape. So look how a new the seal looks like. And this is the old one. Okay, we're gonna change this later on. So first thing we're gonna do now is take a look at the air spring side. I'm gonna put some rubber gloves because now ev almost every part will have some source of oil on it or grease. To open up the uh, the air spring, first we need a 24 millimeter socket, or or in this case, some sort of a wrench that will fit on this nut. Okay, the top cap was actually not tight at all. There is quite a lot of dust coming out of there. Once this is removed, we have to use the snap ring pliers and remove the snap ring at the bottom. Then we can pull out the air spring. Wow. 
Just a little bit of patience is required. This was actually harder than expected. I had to pry one side of the snap ring with this little screwdriver and pop it out this way. And here we have it out of the way on one side. And now we have to pull And this is our positive and negative chambers. Let's put this on the side. We're gonna clean it later and move to the other side. So first of all here we have we have another snap ring. Again, snap ring pliers, push hard, squeeze. And this is out. Then we can remove the compression adjuster cap. And again, we need 24 millimeter socket or spanner that will fit over here. And we can start unscrewing this. And this is the compression dampening. There's there is some oil inside here, so I'm gonna pour it out. As you can see, this is quite a messy job, so be prepared to get dirty. To remove the, the whole part of the damper piston, we again have a snap ring. Get our snap ring pliers. Always be careful to not scratch any of the surfaces as this might cause leaks. Okay, let me try pulling this out. Oh. And here is how this part looks like. Now I'm gonna clean everything up uh, as good as I can and we're gonna start putting everything back together. Now everything is cleaned and I'm gonna walk you through every part and what it is. So here we have the rebound damper, we have the compression damper, here we have the positive air spring and this is the negative air spring here. This piece uh, actually was before in, in here and it's a volume spacer. For these forks you can actually change the travel by removing volume spacers. So I'll remove this and I'll probably gain another 5-10 millimeters of travel. For this part now, uh, as I cleaned most of the seals, a few of them will need to be looped with oil before putting in. For example, these two here. For looping the seals I'm gonna use this syringe, I'm just gonna put a bit of oil in it. So first thing I'm just gonna pour a bit of oil on the inner seal. Now will be the time if you manage to find a seal kit to just replace the seals but I didn't manage to do that so I'm just gonna reuse the old ones. They seem in a decent condition. So let's now slide this over here. I'm gonna put a bit of oil on, the, on this seal as well here. Okay, I'm gonna start sliding in the positive air spring. Now I'm gonna put a bit of oil in on this seal as well. You can use either 5, 10 or 15 W oil. Okay, so now we have to make sure that these two retaining washers are properly installed inside the uppers. I'm just gonna use this screwdriver just to gently push them in place. So there is a groove inside here that they both have to sit on and they should apply a bit of tension on this part here. So when we put the uh, snap ring it will hold tight. Now I'm gonna move it all the way through. 
and you can see how it's bouncing here like there is a spring inside so now again using the snap ring pliers we're gonna put the retaining ring and we are done with the spring side okay now we can move to the rebound damper so to insert this we have to hold it at an angle this will make the job a bit easier and this pin here the open side should be up like this then the bottom piece which again has a washer in it it needed a bit of tension but it is secure in. and now again taking my trusty old snap ring pliers retaining pin and slide this gently in position squeeze release and that is it now we can move into the more interesting part next thing i will first close the air spring for this i will need five milliliters of five wall five w oil just to lubricate the air spring inside and then we can screw in the top cap so here I have five milliliters of, of oil. I'll just put it the for the uppers at an angle and I'm gonna squeeze it in. And now I'm gonna screw in the top cap. I'm gonna fully tighten it in the end when I finish with the compression dampening side. So before we insert the compression damper, I'll have to open it. So you understand if it's in the opposite position by looking at the bottom of it. Currently, this is closed. So if I rotate it, there is a little hole there. So this will allow oil to travel more freely. For this, I'm gonna actually move to the stand because it will be a bit easier to pour in the oil in because we need roughly about 110 milliliters of oil and this will be quite hard doing it on the bench. So let's go there. Okay, now I'm gonna start putting the oil in. I'll need about 11 of these syringes. Uh, in the end, I'm gonna measure the oil level inside because it has to be a specific measurement. And if everything is, is correct, we're gonna put in the compression dampening. Let's begin. Okay, so now we have to measure the oil level and to do that we have to measure from the top of the crown to the top of the oil and it should be 127 millimeters or 5 inches. And perfect. We just have a, just a little bit on, on top of our marker and it's right at 127. So we are done with the oil. Now, as I said, the compression damper in an open position. We have to slide it in. And tighten the top cap. And now will be a good time to tighten the top caps on both sides. Just tighten them snug. And let's finish it off by putting the compression cap. Again with our snap ring pliers. We're just gonna put this in. And we're done. Now we're gonna move to the last part which will be changing the seals. 
and we will be almost ready to put everything together. Now for the dust seals. First thing, I'm gonna prepare my new seals here. So these foam rings, we have to soak them in oil. For this I'm gonna use a 15W oil. And what I'm gonna do is just place them inside the cap and just fill it in with oil. Just like this. Leave it on, on one side. Uh, in a few minutes I'm just gonna swap them. The easiest way to remove the dust seals will be using a good old screwdriver. And something important here is that you need to pry on the bottom of the seal. So put the screwdriver there and just push down. And that is the old the seal out of the way. In the same time, we can remove the old foam ring. Do the same on the other side. So don't push the uh, screwdriver too much in, just slightly under the seal. And again, remove the old foam ring. So now I'm gonna give this here a good clean and we'll be ready to put in the new dust seals. Using some alcohol, just wipe everything. So in this force there's also a rubber seal but in the kit that I got this was not included so I'm just gonna reuse the old one. Okay, now let's get the foam ring out, place it inside here. Interesting. So this foam ring is obviously not the right foam ring for the job. The pretty one, the, the old ones are not that bad, but still I'm gonna try to Cut these and make use of them. Making sure everything is aligned. Okay. I think this should work. Not the best, but sometimes you have to make some changes and now putting the new dust seal on top so there is a tool for this but in this case i'm gonna use an old seat clamp which i expanded slightly and it fits perfectly over the new dust seal so i'm gonna use it like this and hammer it with my rubber mallet and hopefully it goes in smoothly And here we have it. I had to hammer it a bit on the ground so I have a bit more leverage but overall it went in pretty smoothly so I'm gonna do the same for the other side and then we can assemble the whole fork. Now we have both the uppers and the lowers ready. Using this seat clamp to install the dust seals was definitely a struggle maybe if you have something a bit longer to hold it it will make the job a bit easier but gently tapping on each side was the trick to, to put them in and they are now all nice and flush. Last step is to put the uppers inside the lowers and put 15 milliliters of 15W oil inside both lowers and tighten everything up. So let's do it. Having a stand definitely was useful in this, in this case to hold the uppers while I managed to adjust the dust seals and slide them in. It took a bit of wiggling, but finally they got in. And the last step now is just to fill in the lowers with a bit of oil and tighten the nuts at the bottom. 
For this I will need a piece of wood just to raise the wall slightly. Then I'm going to get my oil. 15 milliliters in one side and 15 in the other. We're finally done with the oil. Now slowly I'll have to push the forks all the way through until both sides show up. And now I'm gonna put in the almond bolt in one side, the nut on the other. Tighten them up so that they are snug. Now I'm gonna get the shock pump and inflate the positive air spring first and then the negative. And here we have 100 PSI in the positive air spring. And I'll put about 60 PSI in the negative. After cycling the fork a few times, everything feels good. And it's time to put up the finishing touches. And we are finally done! Wow, this was definitely one of the more challenging projects that I've undertaken, but it was definitely worth it. I hope I was able to show you what, what it might take you to do a similar service like this, but if I miss something, please let me know in the comments below. Finally, I am very happy because we are one step closer to building this bike, and this will happen in one of the future videos. So until then, please, all of you, wear at least a helmet. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.